Hey everybody, today I've got another video for you where you will learn how to fill a sketchbook quickly. This video is ideal, especially if you're in a rut or you just don't know what to put in your sketchbook and you just want to fill it up already or make some progress in it. If you're interested in improving your gouache skills, then I have good news for you because I will be hosting a free live art class where we'll be painting something like this this a very simple gouache painting and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and you can ask me questions especially if you attend live then this will be a really good opportunity to get your own specific questions answered I will host this art class on September 28th at 4 p.m. Central European time so mark this in your calendar if you're interested in it if you don't have the time to attend live, that's not a problem either. You can just sign up for the class anyways and I will send you the recording afterwards. For the first idea, I used some black watercolor paper. So the idea here is to just use dark paper or any colored paper. And I also used gouache because it's an opaque medium. You can also use acrylic paint for this or any other medium that is opaque. Like you could use acrylic paint pens or stuff like that. And the idea is to eventually glue that paper onto my sketchbook, but to make it easier for myself, I first painted on it and then glued it in because my sketchbook has been getting bigger and bigger, like in width wise. So it's harder to paint in it. And I used this to my advantage, the fact that I can paint on a very flat surface for now and then glue it in later. And you can see here that I did some doodles and all of these are fall related because I'm very excited for fall but those can be done in any kind of way you could do all of them being food related or whatever season you want to do or I don't know whatever you want to put on there it's just a combination of different doodles for one topic and if you really want to fill this page quickly I recommend making the doodles a bit bigger than I did here because in on in all honesty this took me quite a while I don't want to say how many hours because the goal was to fill my sketchbook quickly but this was the painting that took the longest out of all of the ones ones in this video. The ones that are coming next are gonna be very simple and quick things. This was a more sophisticated page if you want to say it like that and I just really took my time because I really enjoyed the subject of it and I really wanted to do all of those fall doodles and in this color scheme. I love the combination of the pink tones and the orange and brown tones so I set up my palette specifically for these and I really really enjoyed just doodling away and coming up with different things. It got increasingly harder. I looked on Pinterest for all of these ideas. I just typed in fall doodles and then very loosely copied the ones that I saw. Like I didn't fully copy the illustrations that I saw. I just looked at them for the ideas if that makes sense. And I also just typed in uh, fall flat lay photos and stuff like that. So you will see different kinds of products or decorations that have to do with fall. And like I said, you could do that with any idea. You could do that with any other season or you could type into Pinterest just food photography or vegetable photos or stuff like that and you will get good reference pictures but if you want to fully copy the pictures that you recreate then I recommend going on a royalty free stock page like Pexels or something like that because then you don't have to worry about the copyright. I usually only use Pinterest when I plan to really change up the designs that I look at and make them my own so the references are just a starting point but not something that I completely copy and if you want to be more on the copying side then I recommend making sure that you have the rights to do so 
And now I glued it into my sketchbook and then I decided that I wanted the other page to be complementary to the left one. And I usually do that. I want my sketchbook page spreads to look kind of cohesive and like they go together. This is really fun for me because then when I do the second page, I really have to come up with something that fits the first one. And I kind of appreciate that challenge and I love looking at the finished page spread when it fits together. And and so I reused just the same paints that I had on my palette that I used for the first one. And in that way, I have a very cohesive palette. You can see that I'm just doing very loose scribbles or whatever you want to call this. But to be fair, this would work better with watercolors than with gouache. I mean, you get some effects as you can see here, but of course the colors spread very beautifully with watercolors. And also I had to protect the pages later on so they don't, don't rub off on each other because if you have different gouache paintings on both sides of your sketchbook, then you might want to figure out how to protect the painting. And I just put some clear film on it, like a tape, like the ones that you would put on your school books to protect them. But I don't know if there's any better way to do that. You can see now that I also used a little scrap of the black paper and I wrote fall vibes on it. And I usually go from right to left because I'm left-handed. People love to point that out. Yes, I am left-handed. I don't know why that's such a big deal, honestly. And then I glued that in and now it kind of goes together more nicely. I'm really happy with all of these colors and so excited for fall to be honest. Then in the same sketchbook I'm going back to this page and I just wanted to do a very quick thing and so I used this block of scrapbook paper that I had, picked the page that fit my painting on the left the best, cut it to size and glued it in. That's literally all I did here and that's okay. You can just glue stuff into your sketchbook and then this is a complementary to my drawing that I did on the left. So it's still your sketchbook and a very quick and simple hack to fill it more quickly. The same thing goes on this one. I will glue stuff in here as well. I used this magazine that I got from an upgrade box and I just ripped out a page that I really liked and this is art by a different creator. So I made sure that I gave credit to them. And you can see that I'm now cutting all of those things out and then sticking them into my sketchbook. I also cut out this stamp of a parrot. I made this stamp and these were just test stamps on a paper and I kept them so I could use them in my sketchbooks. And I also just added the background here with the scrap paper in this teal color. And then I painted the right side with more of that teal color. I really, really love that color. And here is the name of the artist. I glued that into the sketchbook page as well. You can see it at the top right now and I'm gluing all of that onto the page. So this is basically a collage. You can do this in all different kinds of ways. You can only stick one thing on your page or multiple things like I did here, or you can really go into it and really make a cool collage. I didn't think that it needed it too much here because the sketchbook page from the artist that I glued in was already kind of a collage and now we have this more messy looking page spread. For the next one I'm painting again and I'm using gouache again and I decided to paint two pumpkins. These are fairly big, fill the page and are fairly quick to paint. So this is perfect for this video and I did a little bit of shadows and then I added in the stems when the first layer was kind of dry so I wouldn't put my hand onto the wet paint but I do that 
enough times honestly and I added in a little bit of details and shadows and th things like that with gouache I usually start with a mid-tone and then I add in the darker tones and the highlights so I have these three things with watercolors I start with the lightest tone and I think with oil paints you're supposed to start with the darkest tone and go towards the lighter tones so this really depends on the medium and with with gouache I found that it's easiest to start with the mid-tones and you can see I added in the shadows at the bottom and now I'm doing a few highlights at the bottom top and I love how the stems turned out I don't know I love how they're so in a spiral kind of I think that looks really fun and this I think was one of the quicker ones of this video and then I added in a background again a teal color because that's my favorite color and I really love this combination of the orange and the teal and now this page is completely filled with the background but you could also do it without the background for sure it's not a must-have I just think it adds a little extra and then on the on the other side I used kind of a similar color scheme and I painted some carrots so this is just a slightly warmer orange tone I could have done the same tone but I wanted the carrots to be a little bit warmer and I kept this fairly simple as well you can keep it completely simple if you want to it just depends on the amount of stylization you want to have so I did different kinds of carrot shapes and I only had one reference picture for one carrot and kind of made up all of the other ones in my brain I thought this was really fun I really loved doing this page and I added a bit of greenery at the top and I think that really makes it come together and again with a teal tone this time a slightly greener shade than on the background of the left page but I feel like those two pages go together very very nicely and I always love to paint veggies and fruits and stuff like that and you will probably see me create more of these in the future I will never stop painting veggies and fruits I added in a few highlights and a few more shadows and then this was the finished page spread and now for our last page spread I used watercolors and I started off with this gradient sky both of these pages will be landscapes with a sunset background so I started with blue and then it went into a purple tone into a pinkish tone a little bit of orange in the middle and then kind of mirrored that at the bottom because this is gonna be water and here I painted a skyline and you can do this in whatever way you want you can even add some windows if you want to but I just did this very plain skyline and this was very quick and very easy and I also added in a uh, plane and I had to look at the reference picture for that because I had no idea how to paint that plane but you can leave that if you want to or you can add it in you could also add some birds or something like that and then I did a reflection kind of with the black so this is just a reflection of all of these houses and I just faded that out towards the bottom adding more and more water to my mixture and that's the landscape and then I did something similar on the right side again I did this sunset kind of gradient and then I removed those puddles on the sides those happen fairly often when you are working in a sketchbook I just used a damp brush and also to reinstate the gradient a little bit just use a clean damp brush then I waited until all of that was dry before I painted the first mountain with this teal color and I made sure that all of that was dry until I did the next mountain with this darker tone and again waited until that was dry before I did this 
mountain so you kind of have to be a little bit patient with this one or use a heating tool or hair dryer to speed things up and I just gradually moved towards darker colors like I said before with watercolors I work from light to dark and the mountains in the foreground are the darkest so this is the order that I did all of that in again added in a bit of reflections with a dark tone this was a dark brown tone very dusty color and that's the finished page spread I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to sign up for my free art class and I hope I can see you again next time goodbye